In this era of overconsumption, both in products and information, it is hard to discern what is important and what isn't. We have this overstimulation of information as well as products sold to us, which is very numbing, and we fall prey to marketing tactics. Consume, consume, consume. But there's one figure that stays true to its mission goal and original philosophy. Here enters Jound. Jound is, according to their website, a digital mood board intended to examine the reoccurring patterns in timeless design. With thousands of curated images, the color-coordinated visual stream of consciousness has become a global mainstay and reference for the design community. Since its inception, Jound has grown in the last decade into a collaborative design studio that aims to inspire through multiple channels, through fabrication of items with purpose and longevity, through the design and construction of meaningful physical environments, and through the continued curation of its digital platform. In addition to its own projects, Jown has worked in collaboration with numerous established artists and brands to extend its strong design ethics. Located in Montreal, Canada, the design studio is operated by their founder, Justin R. Saunders. Jown was essentially the original internet mood board. Essentially, they were Tumblr before Tumblr. They are not a revolutionary brand, nor do they claim to do anything different. But it is just so refreshing to see somebody work against the current zeitgeist of overproduction and undervaluation of humanity. Jown spends a lot of time focusing on the materiality of an item. They are a true minimalist in the most true sense of the word. Here's a small excerpt from a creator named Matt Diavella. He did a documentary on minimalism where he interviewed somebody who was talking about the word materialism. We are too materialistic in the everyday sense of the word, and we are not at all materialistic enough in the true sense of the word. So I use the term true materialism. We need to be true materialists, like really care about the materiality of goods. In the fast fashion world, we buy and throw out. We don't care about the actual materiality of the goods. What matters is their symbolic meaning. That's why we discard them so rapidly, because they lose social value. Now that the background of Jound is covered and you guys are all up to speed, the hoodie that we're talking about is the J95 men's hoodie. I have the white logo version, but they also released a black on black logo version, which looks super slick. Here's the description that they posted on their website. The J95 hoodie was inspired by our favorite era of sportswear, the 90s. Essentially, the embroidered logo, the two needle cover stitching, pays homage to the techniques that were popular during this time. The hoodie is made from a substantial 14 ounce tight knit fleece that we developed locally. In contrast to our J90 crew neck, this fleece is heavier and with a little stretch. To account for the fleece's properties, we adjusted the J90 boxy fit, giving it a baggier fit, a drop shoulder, and fine-tuned the hood for a snug fit. We also added a thick stretch 17 ounce 1x1 tubular knit rib to the waist and cuff for added comfort. Our custom fleece blend is also finished with an anti-pill and after shear treatment to ensure that the fabric can endure vigorous wear and is also easy to wear. Pretty much the description of the item told you everything that I liked about the hoodie. The reinforced stitching, the slightly baggier fit, and the ribbing of the waist and cuff and the durable cotton poly blend. I think it's really the big picture that made this hoodie worth the $185 that they were charging. The fact that the hoodie was local the fact that the fabric was sourced in Canada and assembled in the United States allows me to believe that the product has been sustainably produced. There are alternatives like Norse Projects, Raining Champs, and Wings and Horns, but these hoodies are small batch, so there's no way that Jown can compete with larger companies that probably own their own independent factories or have large order deals with third party factories. I sort of look at it as support for their vision. Also, to be fully honest, I don't think you can find a hoodie like this anywhere else. Sure, you could argue that you could find a vintage hoodie that fits like this at your local thrift shop, but it won't have that custom 
anti-pilling and the custom fabric. You could also find the anti-pilling and then the identical fabric, more or less, from other companies, but it won't have this vintage baggy fit. I believe that this hoodie is worth $185 that I paid for it, and I really hope to get a lot of wear out of it. This hoodie, compared to the competition, really is a cut above. I use my flow like a weapon, that's how I survive. I always dreamed about splurges.